Okay, in this video, I'm just giving a simple demonstration of how to set up or how to estimate the relationship between two sets of variables. So we could think of a, a y variable. So we might think of a y variable that's dependent on an x variable. And we could say, okay, let's take x. Let's say the value of x, there's a series of values for x. So we could think of temperature, or we could think of consumption, or we could think of um, the number of uh, cars sold in a particular day of a week. So these are just random variables I'm hitting. So we could think of two, we could think of four, seven, nine, 12, 16, and 17. And let's say we knew for certainty. Let's, we could think of, um, we'd say there's a relationship. What's the relationship? The relationship is we have a particular value y, which depends on x, but it's not a precise, the relationship is, um, not just equal to x, it's equal to some fixed amount, we'll call it a, plus b multiplied by that variable x. Okay, so this, um, right, so, okay, uh, let's say we know the parameters, which is generally not the case. Normally, we observe x, we observe y, we have to estimate a and b. But let's say we know that a is equal to 2 and b is equal to 3. In other words, that um, y is equal to some constant. And we'll dollarize that by pressing F4 plus b. I'm going to dollarize that by hitting F4 multiplied by the x variable. Okay, so we have y is equal to 8, and if we drag that down, we get the other values. Okay, now in this instance, we could say the relationship is precise. And we know for certainty that if, we, if x is 2, then y is equal to 2 plus 3 times x. And likewise, 14. If x is equal to 4, y is equal to 2 plus 3 times, what's d5? d5 is x, and so on. Okay, so that's a, that, is, that is our starting point. Okay, now let's let's reverse engineer that. Let's take these two sets of values again and just paste. And I'd say home paste special just values. Okay, so we have we have the values. Okay. And let's take the relationship that we're trying to specify. And let's paste. And let's say the question the question that we now are posing is in reverse. We observe x, we observe y, we we want to determine the relationship between x and y. We suspect it's a linear relationship where there's a constant a and a constant b, but we don't know what these values are. They're unknown. Okay, so both values are, we don't know what they are. Okay, so in the first case, if you like, we said there's a very, there's a linear relationship between x and y. And we know what a and b are in that relation, in that linear relationship. In this worksheet, we're turning uh, the information on its head. We're saying we know x, we 
observe x. We observe y, which we think is dependent on x. x is independent, y is dependent. What would, what should the relationship between a and b? In other words, what is the a and the b here that gets us as close as we possibly can so that when a added to b multiplied by x is worked out, it's as close as possible to y. Well, one way we might try this out is to use, is to set out a solver. We could use solver. So if, if we never had in our life, if let's say we never had in our existence come across what's known as linear regression. I'll put that in this. So let's say we never had before come across what's called linear regression. Could we intuit? Could we intuit what is the relationship between x and y? So what we might try is the following. We could say, okay, we'll put in initial seed values. Okay, so we'll say, look, there's the initial guesses or initial seed values for A and B. And we're going to go completely with naive guesses. So we could say A is 1, B is 1 for this relationship here. If that were the case, why? If we were to work out what the value of y was, the y fit, or the estimated y, we might say y is equal to a f4 plus b f4 multiplied by x. And pull this down. Okay, so in other words, 1 plus 1 times 2 is 3. 1 plus 1 times 2, 2 is x, got to be 3. And then we, then we might say, okay, uh, how good is that relationship? How, how good are, are these initial guesses? In terms of our estimation. So, okay, let's just check that. Let's work out an, an error. So, okay, let's subtract. Let's take y and subtract away the fit. And say, okay, the error actually is quite substantial. Okay, so when we subtract, we can see the difference between the actual true value and the estimated value for y is substantial. And of course, we would like to minimize that error. And typically, when we try to minimize something, uh, when we're trying to minimize the difference between two sets of values, we try to take the square. Because the square is insensitive to negative or minus. If we, so for instance, if we had put in a value of 3 here or 4, right, you could see we're getting negatives. And if we talk about minimi min minimizing the error between two sets of values, that would also mean going for the most negative. So to avoid that, what we typically do in estimating these type of relationships is to minimize the error squared and then we don't worry about getting a very negative negative value. Okay, so let's just square the error here to the power of 2. Okay, and let's pull it down and then just do a sum up.
and obviously that's big value and we probably would say we don't like it being so big uh, but we could use a, a facility a tool within Excel to help us deal with this and uh, the way we might address this is we could go to data and we could go to solver and what the solver allows us to do is say okay let's take this error term so i11 and either minimize it or set, set it to a value of zero so i'm going to say minimize and how are we going to minimize we're going to minimize by changing these two in other words keep running through iteratively on a grid search type basis different values for the a and the b so that we arrive at a situation where this cell here i11 is minimized now we could try afterwards set to a value of zero by changing these two okay but let's go for a minimum for the moment and we'll ignore there's different options here but we'll just go with the one the default value and let's hit solve and say okay and that's 9.8 9.58 negative 0 that's a very small value that's like uh, 0 point and then I think it's eight zeros and then the nine so it's really small okay and it's given us approximately values of 2 and values of 3. So what is solver done? It's found the value. Initially we started knowing we designed this problem in such a way that we actually knew the true values. Then in sheet 2 using solver we said we pretend that we didn't know A and B and we put in values of 1 and 1 and then we said okay let's work out the error and error squared let's go to data solver pick set this value here this time I'm going to say to a value of 0 by changing these two cells here and then hit solve and we'll have a look and we have a value of 1.99 and 2.99 and this value is slightly higher this time because it's 0 0.000769 so I think I actually prefer just minimizing and hit OK and OK this is a very small value now and it's it's approximately 2 and 3. Now if I copy those Right, copy and paste value. I might not have exactly. Try that again. Home, paste, special, and we'll go with values. And then let's have a little look. Um, okay, so you can see this slight difference, right, from the true two and the three but it's got me very very close okay so that's an introduction to uh, linear estimation in the next video clip I'll look at how you implement linear regression in Excel